welcome to the Being Your Own CEO Success Circle. And this morning we are going to talk about website traffic. But first, uh, let's do what we normally do. And that is introduce ourselves to um, the group by doing our elevator pitch. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? This time I'm going to do do my elevator pitch first, and that way I have, I have other things are happening here. So, so um, the following is my elevator pitch. <laughs> 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 Greeting. This is Coach La. I love supporting third agers who are experiencing overwhelm, uncertainty, and procrastination as they take uh, their first steps toward creating their online business. With my solopreneur, uh, solopreneur, I can't even talk this morning, my solopreneur coaching service, you can choose the level of support that makes the most sense to you. Uh, is it done by you? Is it done with you? Or is it done for you? So to find out more, please visit my website at lowerland.com. So there. Um, Fred, would you like to go next to by introducing yourself? Certainly, Lowerland. Thank you. I'm Fred Jones, the creator of Our Future Leaders, where we assist the young people and the younger generation to gain all the important communication and leadership skills to assist them to help solve all the world problems that they and we're facing. If you know of anyone who's interested in working with youth, helping youth, please reach out to me. I have an enormous amount of material and approaches that can assist you. And I am an ambassador for an international organization that can work around the world. So. I'm currently in Langford in near lowland on the southern tip of vancouver island on the west coast of canada and british columbia right on back from california yes <laughs> oh well um it's good to have you back and um i heard you say in our um in discussion earlier that you're going on a boat trip tomorrow lucky you um, just among the Gulf Islands or any specific um, um, destination? We enjoy being on Salt Spring. Oh, yeah. Uh, the marina is right in Ganges and yeah. Yeah. Uh, everything in Ganges that you yeah. want. And it's yeah. so nice there. Yeah. It's wonderful. So we will definitely end up in Ganges, but we stop sometimes in Galliano Islands and some of the other islands as well in mm -hmm. the Gulf. But it's lovely. It's just a beautiful part of the world. Mm -hmm. And it's so nice in the Gulf Islands. Ah. Um, there is Jay coming in. Good morning, Jay. <laughs> so we're just in the process of introducing ourselves. So uh, Vivek, would you like to go next? Namaste. My name is Vivekananda. Literally, it means wisdom and happiness. I am proud to share my belief with uh, Steve Jobs and Leonardo da Vinci who said simplicity is the ultimate in sophistication. I aim to bring time-tested wisdom and happiness together into your business and life by unifying, simplifying, and amplifying simple technology and tools. Together at WAKE, we wake up our potential. So that's my elevator pitch. Uh, I am in Reading, England, United Kingdom. Uh, the weather has been really warm. For the geographical location we are in, it's uh, unusual, but uh, yeah, it is 25 degrees, it says, centigrade. So, mm -hmm. 
warm and sunny for the past few days so mm-hmm. they are talking about uh, likelihood of drought <laughs> oh oh dear yeah <laughs> oh well um it's been it's it's, uh, it's it's starting to cool off here we had we had quite a, a spell of of very warm weather and you had to have the fans and the air conditioning going on at night or whatever but it's uh, it's cooled off a bit so yeah mm. right on and i might like to just acknowledge that we have alana and javita uh, out there in youtube um uh, watching and um Actually, I got a message also from Ros Boundy, who lives in Australia, who said, well, I will definitely watch this one, <laughs> but uh, not live, <laughs> given where she is. So, but I do want to acknowledge everybody. So, Jay, do you want to introduce yourself or do we just assume we all know who, who you are? <laughs> We're not getting any sound. Why not? Well, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, my name is Jay and I build websites and uh, I try to get lots of traffic to them. (laughs) And and my my name literally means have another drink in Irish. (laughs) Speak. (laughs) Oh, dear. (laughs) Well. Which also brings wisdom and happiness. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Yes, right. <laughs> so, um, um, well, wisdom, we might, we might question that one. <laughs> Maybe happiness, but. <laughs> so I promised uh, before we start, because we are going to talk about website tra- traffic, but I promised um, uh, Fred that I would tell that, because uh, we were talking uh, in the green room about the fact that um, weird things seem to be happening uh, in in the internet world or the community world lately and uh, so i i just dropped the bomb that said never dust your computer when the computer is on <laughs> so i i won't go into this long harangue but um i was um the computer was on and I was dusting and first thing you know, the monitor went out, just disappeared. And then my um, um, connection to the internet went out. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm down on the floor, unplugging everything, replugging everything in, doing all the things that I know you're supposed to do, etc took forever and um it wasn't or I, I i just didn't it just didn't work so i finally called shaw and um the the tech support person was very um very patient very accommodating throughout the process we discovered that it was something wrong with my power bar so after replugging things in uh, different places and so forth, we realized the power bar had was out. So later, I'm having a chat with J- uh, with uh, Vivek, and he said, "What were you dusting with?" And I said, "I have one of those dusting mitts." And J- <laughs> Vivek says. But those work on the principle of a static electricity. He said, I bet your power bar has a surge protection. And when you were using your 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 um, mitt, it made it 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 caused uh, the the um, surge protection to come on on your (laughs) your power bar. And that's exactly. And so I ended up putting everything back the way it should, and all I had to do was turn the power bar on. And, of course, I didn't know that, um, and I, I hadn't touched anything or moved anything or changed anything. 
So it never occurred to me to check the power bar. <laughs> that was a whole day just about gone. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I, I have a few other stories, but I won't bore you with them. So um, uh, I'm looking at the text on the uh, YouTube and Alana says, hi everyone, sorry, I can't make it into the green room today too much going on over here oh now the curiosity is arising and Javita is saying hello Vivek and Fred and I think somewhere in there hello um, etc so so now just by way of introduction I know that we all have one or more websites and it took a lot of time and a lot of work to create them, but they're not much value if no one arrives. So I'm curious um, about what kinds of strategies that I may have missed. Uh, I think uh, based on some uh, conversation that we had uh, yesterday about uh, website for courses, uh, Vivek and I realized that we're not getting the traffic. So it's, I mean, the, what's the point of doing all of this stuff unless we're getting traffic? So I invited Jay, the traffic expert, and he's the only person I know that can post something that's got absolutely no content and have it show up as number one in, in Google search. So if that isn't an indicator of, of expertise, I don't know what is. So, so I hope you're going to share all of your secrets, Jay. Perhaps, perhaps. <laughs> so, so that's funny that you guys, I, I totally, I always forget about that site. <laughs> well. So let me, uh, let me share my screen. Hmm and give insight as to what what uh la is talking about <laughs> right <laughs> so for those who enjoy um tailgating you can buy these things called tailgate bundles which are uh like packages of tailgate bun uh of tailgate swag if you will mm -hmm. so here's my website <clears throat> tailgatebundles.com so I googled tailgate bundles and then if I click on it there I am at the top with no content no page. I go to the about that's it <laughs> there's a little shop with one tailgate bundle no blog no contact and that's and that's it that's all it is tailgate bundles. So now obviously, you know, this kind of leads into is like, well, what, what the heck is, um, how do you, how do you get up there? Right. <laughs> so <clears throat> it all starts with keywords and, and a keyword is, um, what someone searches for on Google. So if I go to Google and I search for, let's say best coffee, uh, grinder, or espresso. So my intent is to find the best coffee grinder for espresso for my own needs. So obviously these people, so here the first three rows are ads. After that, so we'll say here, this is position one, okay? So what, what these websites are trying to do is to put themselves in front of the audience that has search intent. So they're trying to get my attention so that hopefully I can, you know, buy from them or convert or sign up or do whatever the, the conversion element is. <clears throat> okay. So that's the start is, is the Google search. And in this case, it's best coffee grinder for espresso the end result 
for the search part is clicking on one of these links. Okay. So what the, the reason why now there's several factors why this person is the, the number one result. Okay. But if we look at the person's title, it says five best coffee grinders for espresso. So my search intent has been fulfilled by this article because it's telling me, Hey, you know what? We have the five best coffee grinders for espresso for espresso in 2022. So it, it makes me wonder, well, which one is it, right? <clears throat> Even as a little image for eye candy. So how do they do that? Uh, it all starts with now, now that that's the search experience. So now let's talk about what this website had to do to attain that traffic. And that is, it all starts with keyword research. Okay. So what this website, coffee, affection.com is not my website, uh, is what they did is they did some keyword research. They said, hmm, well, let's see how many people Googled best coffee grinders for espresso. Let's see on average how often someone Googles that. Mm -hmm. So now how do we get that information? Well, <clears throat> there's free methods and then there's paid methods to do this. A free method to get to, to learn how many people are Googling a certain term in a given month, the free method is using something called uh, the Google Ad Planner, which is actually part of uh, Google's AdWords program. So you can go into Google Ad Planner and if you have a Google account, then you can one sec here. Sign in. Oh, in the meantime, uh, good morning, uh, Paul. Welcome here. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. All right, so I'm going to go back into Google Ad Planner. What's this? Okay, now... <clears throat> So it says get search volume and forecasts. Well, I want to I want to learn how many people are are searching that term. Who, um, best coffee coffee grinder for espresso. Mm -hmm. So I want to get that what's called search volume, and the search volume is approximately how many times every single month someone is googling a term. So Google's actually going to provide some of that information to me. So I'm going to go click on this one in the middle. Now, if you don't have a Google Ads account, you do need to set one up, which is completely free. You do have to provide billing information, but you don't have to create an ad, okay? So just be aware of that. You just got to create the account and then that's it. Okay, <clears throat> so now I'm going to search best coffee grinder for espresso. And let's actually, let's do just best coffee grinder like that and get started. Okay, so now I'm gonna zoom in here. Now the, the whole intent of Google Ad Planner is to tell me how many people are searching that for a given month and, and approximately how much it costs to bid on that keyword if I were to do an ad, okay? But we're not doing ads, we're doing this uh, what's called organically, okay? So if I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to see, take a look here. So it says best coffee grinder, average monthly searches, 1,000 to 10,000. So I'm obviously that's very vague. <laughs> um, and then best coffee grinder for espresso, it's saying um, 100 to 1,000. So I'm going to meet them in the middle and I'm going to say, all right, let's say it's 500 searches a month on, on average, right? <clears throat> now it says competition. So what we also want to know is how competitive is that keyword? Meaning like if it's got like Yahoo and, and Amazon and all these other websites on the first page of Google for that term, that's what they mean by competition or more so how many websites are in Google for that particular term. 
Now, we can actually get a little bit of an idea as to how many websites are in there. Again, for free, okay? So I'm going to take our term. So right, right now we have, it says about 500 searches a month. I'm very happy with that search volume, okay? I think that's totally fine. So now I'm going to I'm going to find out approximately how many websites are in the the web in the Google search engine. So I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to I'm going to Google the term in quotes. When you Google the term in quotes like this, you're asking Google, you're saying, "Hey Google, can you please show me the search results for that exact term? No deviation to that, okay?" So I hit enter. Now it says here about 13,600 results. So that's that's what we call our wine sniff test. So that's a lot of websites, but we want to make it a little more accurate. Okay. Cause that's actually not as accurate as it, as it seems. So we're going to go down to the bottom and we're going to actually utilize this little thing down here. So, I'm going to click on the number seven, which is the last number there. Scroll down. Perfect. Okay. Now it says in order to show you the most relevant results, we have omitted some entries very similar to the 63 already displayed. So it's telling us that the competition is about 63 different websites. Okay, so this is what we call the, the QSR, quoted search result. Okay, <clears throat> so now we know it has a high search volume. It has a, a relatively low QSR, you know, so that's great. So now, now we can actually go ahead and say, all right, let's, let's go ahead and, and write uh, an article about the best coffee grinder for espresso. You know, let's try to, to work on an article that, that says, you know, the title is, hey, the best coffee grinder for espresso for, you know, small kitchens or something like that. You know, so have some sort of hook to bring them, the audience in and a reason why they click on your site, okay? So <clears throat> let's say we write an article about the best coffee grinder for espresso. Okay, boom, we publish it on our coffee website. And now what? <laughs> right? So now what do we do? Well, what we do want to do is we want to go to a website uh, called Google Search Console. And what Google Search Console does, it's literally the Google bat phone. Okay. And it contacts Google and says, Google, I've got a new article. I want to let you know about it. Okay. So let me just grab something. I'm, I'm going to switch topics as to the topics just so I can use this website as our example. Okay. Now I wrote an article and that article is called who killed Mr. Krabs in SpongeBob. Okay, so here's the article. You thought I was kidding, right? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so I want to let Google know about it. Okay, so this is the same thing. So this this article could be the best espresso or uh, uh, best coffee grinder for espresso, right? So this is the end result. We did our research. We realized that we can, you know... It's an article that we can get up there in, in rankings and stuff. Okay, so so now we're going to go to the Google Bat phone. So we're going to take my article's website address, otherwise known as the slug or the URL. And we want the, Google to inspect the website address. We want them to inspect the article. Okay, so there's a little tool here called URL inspection. So I'm going to go ahead and and it's if I click on that it says here what's what's the URL so I paste it in there I press enter All right so now because this article already exists it's saying hey you know what this URL is in Google 
perfect, good. All right, that's totally fine. Now, if it was not in Google, it would say URL's not in Google and these would be grayed out. So from there, I can say, uh, Google, can you please go take a look at it and put it in the search engine for that relevant term? So now it does this. Now what Google is doing is it's going out and reading the article. It's, it's launching what's called spiders. Whoosh, off it goes, reading all the spiders, reading the words, reading the links to it. It's doing all its little proprietary things. Okay, and we could just kind of leave that tab alone and we can come back to it in a few minutes. So now the goal here is to try to rank for that. Mm -hmm. So as of today, it's in position eight. Now, the cool thing is that when you start working with Google Search Console, that bat phone, this little box will show up for you so that it actually helps you when you, whenever you're doing your keyword research, it helps you show like what, uh, what, you know, what your, what average position you're in for that keyword you just searched for and how many impressions. Okay. So let's see. So there I am right there. Perfect. Good. Excellent. <clears throat> and now what we'd want to do as well is we would want to send this out to other places. Okay. So now we've done our, our, our job to get it in Google. Okay. But now we need to get, you know, don't, don't put all your eggs in one basket. So what are some other things that we can do to get traffic to the website? Well, <clears throat> so we've done Google. There's also something called Bing webmaster tools. So, Bing actually has a fairly large shareholder of search um, volume, meaning there's lots of people that are using Bing to, to search for stuff, okay? And, uh, and the cool thing is Bing actually has a Bing Webmaster Tools, kind of like what Google has. And we can do exactly the same thing that we did inside of our, our Google Search Console. All right, it says indexing requested. The URL was added to our queue. We're gonna press got it. And then we're, we're, we're great. So now the great thing about the search console or Bing Webmaster Tools is it gives us some ideas to what kind of keywords are showing up for our website. So as you start adding more and more content, you kind of go to our search results. We can take a look here and we can see here are some of our, um, our, uh, our, our keywords that we're ranking for. Okay. <clears throat> now let's say I want to find out only this particular URL. Okay. So I, I only want to know what keywords that one post is ranking for. Okay. So I can create a filter. So I'm going to click on pages. I'm going to go up here and press new, click on page, oh, pop that in there. And I'm, I only want to see last 28 days. Actually, heck, let's just do last seven days. And then let's look at the queries. How did Mr. Krabs die? Who killed Mr. Krabs? Who killed SpongeBob? Who killed Mr. Krabs? And so on and so forth. <clears throat> Uh, just to let you know, Mr. Krabs did not die from SpongeBob. This is actually a mock trial that a school did, a school teacher did, uploaded a PDF, and it just exploded and went viral. <laughs> it's it's wild. It's it's a really cool little uh, story. So, uh, at any rate, okay, but that's how we can find out, you know track the progress of individual pages and posts. Okay. Um, now, other things that we can do to the website. So how do we get other people to this website? Well, number one is Google is not the end all of, of traffic. What about making a video? So we can take this article and we can do something called repurposing the content. We could take this content and we could make a really simple little video. 
we can do a, a video with our face uh, and and voice in on the camera. We can create a little PowerPoint slide with just our voice. We can just do a PowerPoint slide with no voice. Point is, we can make a video, okay? There are a lot of free tools like Canva, C-A-N-A-V-A.com, that we can use to create that video. And once that video is done, we can head over to YouTube and we can create videos, okay? Now in these videos, we can send people to our website. Speaking of coffee, <laughs> so we can make this have this video go to our best coffee grinder for espresso, okay? By adding a little link mm -hmm. in our website. And this little link is called a backlink, but this is also our own channel. So we get search traffic from this channel. We can get links pointing back to the website. And people could subscribe to us and watch all our other videos, which are, you know, right here and so on and so forth. There's also a place called Pinterest. Mm -hmm. Pinterest is, is like a giant um, cork board. You know, you know, when you walk into a store, there's usually like a little business cork board, people leaving like, you know, free guitar lessons and you take the little ticket thing. It's kind of like that. So here we can have, we can make these fun little uh, images. So this little image here, it says, how do Roscoe color gels can enhance your lighting? So if I click on that, it takes us to the article, how Roscoe color gels can enhance your film lighting. Cool. And there's the article. So from there, it's a, a way to get additional traffic to the website. There's also social media. Now, Pinterest and Google, uh, YouTube is considered a social media, but let's say there's a lot of people on, uh, let's say Twitter that hang out that are, is part of my audience. So what, what you can do is you can create a, a, a Twitter post, okay? So here, I created something called a thread, which is a, 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 a Twitter post within a Twitter post. So you see all of these little things are threaded underneath the post. So this here, it says, so we invited this particular individual to write for, uh, uh, write the article for our website. So how does a color gel work? Ashley Caulfield of CA and LA Twitch gives us her expertise. And now those little icons represents that this is a thread, like a forum thread. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, I, 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 I've literally took the H2 headings of this particular article And I put these in a thread. Okay. And then when I get to the bottom for the full post, head over to our website. So then people go to the website. So again, another source of traffic. Now this, this uh, post is uh, about a week old. Okay. This post is about a week old. It's already sold one uh, color gel, which is the call to action right down here, right here, this thing. Mm -hmm. It's also sold a camera, a $2,500 camera as a result of that because people went to uh, other places on the site and ended up finding our Canon OES Rebel review and they bought the camera. <clears throat> so let's take a look at what kind of keywords this is, is doing for us. So now we're gonna create a little filter, this. All right, so here's, it has 18 keywords that are in Google already, okay? 
So ranging from terms like Roscoe gels, Roscoe lighting gels, Roscoe is the company, um, Roscoe gel, gels for LED lights, film gels. So lots of different keywords that have intent. So we've been able to get search intent traffic and non-search intent traffic. Search intent traffic is the people actually Googling something and landing on our website. The non-search intent is like things like this, where someone happens to be following us or, you know, we actually had uh, this filmmaker share this thread on her story, on her uh, account. So we got that type of traffic. That is the non-search intent. It's like window shopping. It's like, oh, they passed by the window and saw something cool. So they went and looked at it. And that's how we got the sales. So you can see there's search intent and non-search intent. Search intent is when someone actually Googles something, sees your website, clicks on it, and off they go to the website. Non-search intent is when they are on someone else's channel or on a different platform and they go to it. So <clears throat> if you were to keep doing this over and over and over again, you know, you you so the next thing is now I find now I go and find a new keyword to work with. You can attain this type of traffic. So this is that film site, right? So last seven days, 7,000 users, 7,800. So basically it ends up getting about, you know, seven to 8,000 visitors a week. And right now there are actually seven people on there live. And these are the URLs that they're, they're looking at. Okay. And that's in a very tightly crammed nutshell, how to get more traffic to your website. <laughs> so Jay, um, are, do you have any plans uh, soon to, you've, I know you've done some, um, some videos before about using Pinterest. Uh, any plan on sort of doing something similar for Twitter? Um, yes, I, I, I do have plans on doing that inside of uh wealthy affiliate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Specifically building threads and, and driving traffic. Mm -hmm. So, and it, it's, it's actually not going to be, um, geared too much to just Twitter. It's going to be geared to more social media traffic right. with, with an extension, you know, a highlight of Twitter, a highlight of Pinterest and mm -hmm. stuff. So. So, um, so if I'm, I could just say one more, one more thing mm -hmm. amongst everything that I showed you, it all starts with the keyword research. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is the utmost important thing because if you're, if you're trying to rank for a keyword that has, well, no search volume, like no one's Googling that term and is really highly competitive. So for some odd reason, usually that's not the case, but um, then it's it's absolutely not worth trying to do anything of that nature, okay? Um, <clears throat> so if, if you're trying to sell like whatever it is you're trying to sell, whether it's affiliate marketing, your own products, your own courses, your own software, your own consulting, um, you know, that is the end result, mm -hmm. okay? But no one's going to be Googling your brand. And the only way they would Google your brand is if they learned about your brand through other methods, such as going on to Twitter, um, Google, um, writing a blog post about what it is that your brand does. For example, uh, Laulan and Vivek's uh, website for courses. Sorry, is that it? Website? Yeah. Yeah. Re yeah. So <clears throat> how to, so something like how to build a course in WordPress. How to, how to, you know, because they might not know that you can build a course using the Google tools. No one is Googling how to build a course in Google, mm -hmm. you know, or probably very little. So, so you need to re-educate people by using search methods that people are, you know, it's, it's, it's interrupting the pattern of what, so if I'm Googling how to build a website cor or a course in WordPress, and let's say I'm doing that. I'm doing what you're doing, right? I'm selling what you're selling. Well, I would need to blog about that and say, well, here's a better way. 
there must be a better way. <laughs> it's funny you should say that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we're thinking the same thing as you just suggested. <laughs> I won't say any more, will I, Vivek? <laughs> so, um I I guess what I what I I mean as I um, I know that I for for all of my websites, I've done almost all of those things, but I still don't get the traffic. And that's the that's the the quandary that I find is I've I I I try to do all all of those things, and and yet there's still no traffic, um, no not adequate traffic. So, and of course you can't sell anything unless you've got traffic, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So 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 another thing then is so there is another component to this, which I I did skip over because it's a whole nother ball game and that's the on page optimization for the keyword that you're trying to rank for. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's doing things inside your website mm -hmm. to actually get it to, to rank. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I can, I can just scratch the surface a little bit, but I mean, basically with that keyword, it must be in your title. Mm -hmm. It must be in the first paragraph. Mm -hmm. You also want it in your alt tags, which is in the images. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you also want to have an, one external and one external mm -hmm. link. So an internal and external link within the post. Mm -hmm. Now, most importantly is you want to also go to other areas on your website and create internal links to that new post. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's not like, it's not a reciprocal. So you don't want to go your your uh, internal link to post B and then post B has a link back to point A. You need to go find post C yeah. and link back to post A. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing is, is I'm, I would recommend having other more advanced elements inside your site. For example, uh, something called rich snippets. So we mm -hmm. talked about having a video on your site mm -hmm. or having a video about your post that link, links back to it. Take that same video and embed it onto your site. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other thing, which is uh, relatively new and it's called rich uh, FAQ snippets. Now I will just quickly show you this. That's what something I've not heard of. Yes. Let's load it up here. And as you, uh, while you're doing that, um, it, it becomes very evident. Just even um, all these things that you've done each time. I mean, that's a lot of time and a lot of work. On, yes. on just one I one one <clears throat> posting, for example. It yeah, it's so you build an time. SOP. Yeah. Yes. If you build an SOP, a standard operating procedure for each post, it does become muscle memory and it does become easier mm -hmm. because you know the process, right? Mm -hmm. You you it's like like it's like owning a coffee shop. You have opening procedures, you have cleaning procedures, you have close down procedures you know, accounting procedures and so on. So, so this is the same type of scenario. All right. So real quick. <clears throat> All right. So I'm just going to show you, this is an advanced tool that I use. Um, so right now we're looking at our, our website and it tells us that, Hey, you got, you got 13,700 different keywords in Google. So I want to see those keywords. Okay, now I talked about FAQ snippets. Mm -hmm. So let me just load something up here. So a featured snippet is called position zero in Google. Okay, so for example, If I were to go and take 
uh, a Google one of these. I, I created a filter to say only show me keywords that I'm showing up in position zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've, I've got one preloaded up here. So I'm just going to change my screen. So the term is Premiere Pro Playback Speed. So I Googled that. And then right here, it's called this featured snippet. Okay. So right here. This is the result of adding some code in the back end. Now it's I've used my keyword tool, so whether it's all in one SEO, rank math, or Yoast, the premium versions of those, mm -hmm. uh, I that's how it this helps. Okay. So if I click on the, the result, and we go. So there, there's the, the, the snippet. Wait one sec here. There it is. There it is. Okay. <clears throat> so it's this. This here's the the quick question, and then here is the quick answer. Okay. This inside the back end of the site is using something called an FAQ snippet. So it's actually taking. It's using this site runs on uh, something called Rank Math, which is an SEO tool uh, that helps you format the website. You can do the same thing with all in one SEO, the, the pro version. Mm. And and what it does is it says it says, uh, hey, do you want to use this FAQ snippet thing? And it puts code inside the the website. Okay. So now let's go back to our other area here. Let's go into here. <clears throat> now in Google, they're called enhancements. So if I do a, a quick inspect URL to that one thing that we saw, you could see here oh, yeah. that it has enhancements. So it says, hey, you've got FAQ snippets. So if I open that up, See there, how, how to fast forward and speed up. So it's saying there's the answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> now. So when you, quick. when you, when you're setting that up in all in one SEO, you're the one that creates the question as well as the answer. Correct. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So, so here it is here. Mm -hmm. So, so behind the scenes, like in, in the front end, you saw, it didn't look like this, no. but behind the scenes in the code, it's saying, mm -hmm. Google, this is a question. Google, this is the answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that, and that's how I got position zero. Position zeros are gold because they are above the ads. Yes. Which seems to be taking over. Yes. And I have to admit, um, when I'm when I'm searching for so, uh, an answer on something, mm -hmm. I make use of those um, those mm -hmm. um, questions and answers in there. I'm, I'm yep. many many times I've I've found exactly what I needed to know. Yes. How to do this or how not to do that or whatever it. Um, yes. It's very and, very very useful when you're and those are perfect for creating FAQs within your article. Mm -hmm. um, so real quick, here on the left it shows you Google will show you all the enhancements that your website has. So I got this FAQ thing. So if I click on this, it says, "Hey, you have 27 valid ones that it, we can read." So then if I click on it. It shows me all of the the ones that it actually sees and reads, mm -hmm. okay, which is awesome. Now, now here's the questions: like, well, how how do I how do I find questions to ask? So let's say I don't I don't know what questions to ask or to put into my <laughs> website. Well, what we can do is we can go to our latest blog post. <clears throat> and 
and I can Google Roscoe color gels. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay. So as you can see, we don't have any, this is a very commercial intent type question. Okay. So it's not like how to do it or anything like that, but there is a little section in here called people also ask. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here I can go and, and if I open it up, it actually shows there's an answer in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what I could do is I can go, what is a Roscoe gel made of? I can copy that question. This is this Google is showing me common questions that people are asking. Hmm. So I could take literally these three questions, stick them on the, say the bottom of this post mm -hmm. that, and have it say, you know, uh, common questions about Roscoe gels or gels, color gels, and say, you know, what is a Roscoe gel made of? And I would have a quick one paragraph answer. That's the important part is these answers have to be quick, single paragraph answers so that they can fit in that little knowledge graph box, at, you know, in the search mm -hmm. results. Mm -hmm. And this would increase the likelihood that one, I would go up in, in these people also asks, two, end up in position zero at the top. Mm -hmm. So... Wow. There you go. So there's some non-technical stuff there. I started out with very, tried to be very beginner friendly and got into the more of the advanced ninja stuff. <laughs> well, and, and uh, I mean, from, from, from where I sit, um, it takes a lot of time to um, sort of understand how to make the best use out of those tools that you that you show, you know, the analytics and the search engine and the, the Bing and all of those things. It takes a while to figure out how to get the information that you really want out of those out of those tools. Yeah. The great thing though is is when you climb that mountain of Google. <laughs> yeah, right. It is a mountain. When you climb that mountain of Google and you ascend to the peak, <laughs> you're at the top there and it's hard to get down. You have the advantage of pushing other people down with your content. Oh. So. And, and it's becomes evergreen. It stays up there, mm -hmm. you know, and it ages like a fine wine mm -hmm. or like Paul. <laughs> so um, I've been uh, sort of uh, piping in here, but I'm sure um, the other um, folks here uh, may have questions or observations. So now's your opportunity. Any Anybody ha have any specific questions? I do. Right on. Go ahead. All right, Jay, uh, what you've demonstrated is to me, what it's meant to me is there is a lot of challenges and it can take, as Lowland said, a lot of time to learn all of this to become to the top of the Google mountain. Now, for some people like me who do not have the time, I mean, we only have a certain, we only have 24 hours in the day, each one of us. No one has more than that that I'm aware of. Where do you get this expertise if you don't have it yourself? How do you find people who, who can do this for you or with you? Where would you suggest you go? That's my question. If you need help, which I'm sure a lot of people do, myself probably included, where would you go? Where would you suggest? So before... I answer where to go. I think it's important to understand that you need to know what you, what to ask. You need to know the right questions. Yeah. You need to, need to have at least the basic foundation. For example, uh, let's say your car needs repair. Okay. Or there's going to be a time when you need to know when the oil needs to be changed. Right. Obviously we have a little light um, that says oil change. So, you know, if you don't, know what that symbol means, you don't know what it need, what needs to be done. So the really important thing is to have this, this very, at the very, very least, this basic knowledge of what it is you want, 
you know, because there are, unfortunately, the internet is not the most honest place in the world. So there will be people that will try to take advantage of you and say, oh yeah, you know, I can do that with your website. We need to buy a flux capacitor and a Johnson rod and, and, and we'll get your website to the top for $5,000. So you just kind of, wow, it's okay. <laughs> so you need to have the, the very basic knowledge of what it is you want. Okay, so even just understanding the process of trying to get something in Google is at the very least the type of knowledge that you want to attain and have from there. And, and it is a worthwhile time investment. Knowledge is power. So once you have that core set of, of information, then you can go to places. Well, I would start locally and work your way out. Okay, so uh, Chamber of Commerce is... Um, you know, Toastmasters, this group here, um, you know, things of the of a networking type nature, and then branch out. If you're looking for something to outsource overseas, then I would go to a place called Upwork, U-P-W-O-R-K.com, Upwork.com. Uh, from there, you can actually create a job listing where people from all over the world can apply to it. Okay, you can set filters to say, you know, people need to have a proficiency in certain things to be even be able to be considered to apply to it. And then you go from there. Post a job, uh, um, a, a job posting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. If or, you, if you... or, or find somebody locally, uh, somebody in your network that does know that, you know, knows how to do something. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, when you, when you do it over, when you post it on Upwork and potentially get um, people from overseas, the, the price would be probably uh, more, uh, it would be less expensive than hiring someone local just through the, the global economic state, the dollar value of wherever they are in the world is, is not as valuable as it is here in North America. I think you're warning about there are a lot of scam artists in the internet. And I spoke previously about an example of someone being held hostage for money because of her website and her business. It was mm -hmm. a terrible situation. Yep. And there are people like that who will take advantage if you're not yep. aware. So, and hence why I said you need that base knowledge. So that is a very good advice. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? Yes, <clears throat> yes. I learned uh, today that uh, Jay has uh, probably one of the best handles I've heard, the Ninja. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I, I tried to get the domain, but it was already taken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we've heard that uh, ninja trick thing uh, many times in uh, Wealthy Affiliate, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, any uh, questions or comments uh, from you, uh, Vivek? Anything you wanted to, to do? No? Okay. Well, we are at the top of the hour, I think, almost. <laughs> and so... Um, uh, I guess the um, um, the if if you have a well established website, um, the what comes to my mind would be to just go in and look at every blessed thing and run and run through all of the things that you know and make sure uh, try to update anything that's been there for a while, etc. So mm -hmm. the, there's a lot of time and uh, attention required to, to make that happen. Yeah. So research the keyword, mm -hmm. write the article, let Google know, let all other networks know. So Twitter, mm -hmm. Facebook, tw um, LinkedIn, you can actually create a business page on LinkedIn mm -hmm. and build a thread, you know, build stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is uh, go to other websites and create profiles and, and do things like that. You know, YouTube, all these other places that have the ability to post links to point back to your site. Just don't run all your business all in one basket. Mm -hmm. 
Good point. And, and the great thing is that by actually doing that, Google sees that as a signal to go, oh, okay, well, there's lots of people from other places that are coming to visit that post. So it grows your, your site's authority. And as your site's uh, authority grows, it becomes relatively easier to get stuff in Google because it trusts you. Well, and, and um, what I'm hearing is like, you can't just create a website and then walk away and leave it alone and think that you're going to get a lot of traffic. There has to be constant action happening on that website. It has to, it starts there, but then it goes out to all these other things. So you can't just do something and, and leave it there with thinking that, um, you know, it's like a magazine article. It's <laughs> never, yeah. The short, meaningless reading reputation. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I, I want to acknowledge we have a new person watching uh, on uh, YouTube. Uh, Munir uh, says um, he or she, I don't know whether that's uh, what gender that is, but he's um, saying hi and says he's from India. So, and uh, of course, Alana told us that the, the little image uh, is of a man. Oh, is it? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. I see it. Wow. And um, I also, there was a message there from Alana. She was unable to join us uh, in the green room because she had, um, she was waiting. She was getting rid of her car. <laughs> So, <laughs> so, so Jay, I want to thank you for um, taking time out of your busy schedule to um, um, to outline um, all the steps and all the things. And I certainly know that um, from my own experience, trying to learn all these things, that uh, what you do is you go back and you replay it over, st stop and do a certain piece and go back and, and review again and again. That's uh, the best way to learn how to do things. So you've given us some uh, a tool here that we can all go in and play and listen to and um, learn and do. Learn and do. <laughs> so. Learn learn do and then create a standard operating procedure right in, in, exactly in the words of yoda there is no try there is only do <laughs> there's only do yes <laughs> yes well um i have about a four page uh, checklist uh, even for uh, doing this uh, session every uh, month so yeah yes checklists are good <laughs> so so thank you so uh, thank you again, uh, Jay. Really appreciate that, and I know that um, um, I certainly picked up a number of things that I didn't actually knew or knew or do. No, or yeah, do. So knew or do. Just for no your knowledge, <laughs> just for your knowledge, Lowland, um, all in one SEO does have that FAQ snippet feature. Right. It is new, so. Mm -hmm. Right on. So thank you again, and thank you uh, Vivek and Fred and Paul for uh, joining us this morning. Um, I usually uh, finish us off by saying it's important to do what you love with passion. And we will see you next month, uh, the first Tuesday of the month topic at this point unknown <laughs> something will come up <laughs> so having said that i maybe had a how to repurpose your content for traffic yeah maybe yeah so um let's um let's just finish off now so now what do i need to do i need to do an alt four as an outro. Mm -hmm.